All right, so I got a quick video here on a couple of new modules uh, for Express LRS that um, they've been out for a little while, um, but I've waited to put this video out because they weren't in the uh, official branch of the, um, or the official releases for Express LRS configurator. You could update these uh, using the git branch master um, branch uh, in the Express LRS configurator, but that they, it was not an official release. Those were like development releases. And this I kind of held off on these uh, uh, for a video until you can actually formally uh, update them and put your binding phrase and all that in there. So this is the uh, Jumper uh, AION Nano TX module. This one here has the, uh, this is the diamond, I think it's a folded dipole antenna and has the OLED screen plus the button, uh, 500 milliwatts. It is a nano module, so uh, does, uh, you'll need an adapter if you want to put it into a micro mi micro uh, module bay. And uh, yeah, up to 500 milliwatts. This one, 2.4 gigahertz, of course. And I've got the uh, Darwin FPV here. This is also another nano module. Um, this is actually made by Vantech, which is actually owned by FreeSky. And so they have OEM this to Darwin FPV. This is about $37, I believe, right now. Also 500 milliwatts. This one is just a heat sink, no fan. I believe the uh, jumper has a fan inside here and uh, no screen. And uh, I think the jumper is a similar price around $35 to $40, depending where you get it at. Uh, I think uh, Race Day Quads has it for $36, and it's, there's a lot of places that AliExpress has it for uh, under $40. Some, some places are more, some places less, depends on the store you uh, purchase it from. But this one seems to be a little bit harder to find. I, I think I've only seen it on AliExpress, maybe Bangkok has. I'll link some down below. Um, for this one, this one is currently only available at um, Darwin FPV. There's also the, um, it's called the Vantec or FreeSky version, which is the same thing. And that is, uh, I think I sold on Banggood, but the 2.4 gigahertz of this is not in stock. They do have a 900 megahertz, I think a 950 megahertz and 868 megahertz version of this as well from FreeSky, but that, that's not sold from uh, Darwin FPV. So the, uh, as I said, the targets for this are now in the Express LRS configurator official releases for version 2.2. So you have to get uh, the configurator version 1.3.4. And this one is gonna be um, uh, version 2.2. Uh, the, uh, the target is Vantec. Uh, I think it's like 2400 Nano TX, something like that. I'll pop it up here on the screen. All the settings you have to do to get that. And I just flash mine via the UART setting or via the USB. Here, I think the instructions on the Express LRS website are mainly geared towards doing Wi-Fi update, but I used a USB-C cable and on my computer and that worked totally fine. I did the same thing here on the jumper, USB-C cable, although you can also update this via Wi-Fi. And this one here is again, uh, in the official releases version 2.2, uh, jumper is uh, jumper 2.4 gigahertz and the target is uh, AION Nano TX. 2400 nano tx and that's the target that you're going to want for this one and it updated fine i got my binding phrases in these um yeah, i'm going to be mainly using the darwin fpv on my this is my zorro probably saw that in the previous re review because it's nice and small and compact doesn't have a fan doesn't make any noise one, one thing to note is that the antenna on this one is the first one that is rpsma so you can see the pin is on the transmitter side not the antenna side and uh, the antenna has the hole so so it's kind of funny that uh pretty much everything else out there uses uh sma antenna this is the first one they use as an rpsma antenna so uh pretty much stuck using just the stock antenna that it came with because everything else is sma would have would like to get a, a moxon antenna that's uh, rpsma but i can't find one yet if anyone knows where you can get a, a moxon antenna that's 2.4 gigahertz and SMA, that's what I would like to switch to, but obviously this is gonna be fine. I have no problems with range on this one. Okay, so just a quick little update on where things stand with ExpressLRS right now. Um, basically, a lot of modules tend to come out before they're in the official releases branch of the configurator. So when you get them, you can't use your binding phrase. This, this is pretty common. Yeah, I know that there's some, you know, reviewers that pick on certain companies and and such, but this happens quite often, uh, probably more so than than not. And 
basically the companies, they tend to release them pretty quickly and they get them into the stores. People buy them and they're like, oh, how do I get my binding phrase in here? Well, you can't put your binding phrase in there if you can't find the target to flash the firmware. And I kind of hope, I'm kind of hoping that at some point, maybe the next version of Express LRS, they can get rid of that part where you have to flash the firmware to put your binding phrase in. It would be nice to be able to put it in there in some other way without having to update the firmware. That would that would actually you know, eliminate that problem of uh, waiting for the firmware target to show up. But yeah, for now, you have to wait. So, uh, you know, that's why I waited to put this video out. So I think when this um, came out, I showed it with the the T-Pro 4-in-1 uh, review, which I released at the end of December. And now it's almost the end of January, and the firmware is finally in the Express LRS configurator. I mean, obviously, I, you know, you can update it. It works fine. I've tested it. There's no problems that I can see in terms of the regular update process. Everything seems to work just fine. But yeah, it seems like you do have to, when the modules come out, you have to wait a little bit before they're officially supported in the Express LRS configurator. Now, some manufacturers, they'll work with the developers and they'll, they'll kind of hold off on their release of the product to the stores. Um, I think that's what they should be doing, like all of them, but you know, it's like a sort of, a, it's like a, you know, it's like a race to get stuff out to the market quicker. And, and uh, when they do that, they have basically the, the hardware is out there, but the firmware update in the configurator isn't out there yet. So that's the common problem we're having right now. Hopefully that'll get fixed pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I just, so you know, these are all the uh, two point, or these are all the 2.4 gigahertz uh, modules I've got that I've now updated to uh, 2.2 and I haven't had any issues with updating the 2.2. So I know that some people have had some problems with uh, updating to 2.2. So far, so good. Um, I've been mostly just using the UART method. That seems to be the most consistent. I think the Wi-Fi method is kind of hit and miss. It really depends on, I guess, uh, if you have any kind of Wi-Fi interference somewhere else in, like in your house that can affect the stability of the update. And sometimes if your Wi-Fi connection is lost while you're, while the firmware is flashing, uh, then basically you have to do recovery and you're kind of in a, you're basically the, the it's kind of in a semi brick state. And at that point it gets kind of complicated in terms of fixing that. And again, you should go to the expresslrs.org website and there's lots of troubleshooting tips and stuff over there. I'm not going to regurgitate all that stuff. I've covered that lot of stuff in previous videos anyway. And again, my playlist for previous Express Alerts videos are down in the video description. So just want to let you guys know that this is kind of where things are right now. Version 2.2 seems to be pretty stable for me and everything seemed updated okay. So I know that there's some people, that, there's always going to be some people that are going to have problems updating because either they don't really understand all the, the nuances or they're using uh, or they have, you know, they're having some uh, uh, problems in terms of like the Wi-Fi update. That's a, that's a pretty common problem. Um, but you know, again, the expresslrs.org website does seem to have a lot of the good information to get you out of trouble if you happen to have a firmware update that's messed up. And the last thing I do want to talk about here is the new T Pro with the internal uh, expresslrs module. So this is the new one with the one watt module. I have not made my video yet on this one. Uh, because I um, actually uh, having some issues figuring out how to do the firmware update on this. Now you can do it via Wi-Fi, but I've heard some stories from people that have already bought this that the Wi-Fi update can get messed up. As I mentioned previously, Wi-Fi updates seem to be the most common problem. And when that messes up, your firmware on here becomes unrecognizable and uh, you can't do anything with it. Basically the radio is bricked. Now, the, the problem with this particular radio is that um, they did not release it with uh, cooperation with the devs. So if you have a bricked uh, firmware flash, you have to take apart the whole radio to get inside. There's a bootloader button you have to press. There's a whole procedure on, again, the expresslrs.org website. I'll link that down in the description as well to a specific recovery method for this that you basically have to flash uh, um, an updated version of HTX so that the USB port works so that you can flash via the USB port and then you have to get into the radio, you have to open up the radio and then you have to get into there so you can press the bootloader button while you're flashing because um, they did not do the proper wiring or whatever, the setup for the um, pass-through flashing via the USB-C port so you have to open it up. 
unfortunately. So again, I'll link that recovery procedure down in the description if you guys are wondering about how to fix that if you have that problem where the Wi-Fi update isn't working for you. Um, hopefully you guys don't run into that problem because you do have to take 10 screws out, open up the whole radio to get to that board to press that bootloader button after you've done the other things like uh, flashing the radio with the updated Edge TX and then download the other firmware files for the uh, internal module on this one. So it's kind of a messy situation. Um, it's not like impossible to fix, but for uh, a lot of people that don't know how to like take apart stuff, do flashing, it's uh, quite a bit more involved than your regular flashing of other stuff. So just be aware of that if you are thinking about getting this, um, that doesn't look like that's gonna get fixed anytime soon. So another bit of news there for you guys that have been following all the stuff that's going on with Express LRS. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Yeah, you know, again, uh, I'm gonna probably make more update videos in this sort of style you know, with some new release that's come out and then I'll, I'll add some, you know, snippets of news and stuff that might be important for you guys to follow along, along with all the links down in the video description. Okay, that's good for this one. Talk to you later.